mockery of justice. I repeat, guilty or innocent. Innocent. Welcome back to the Titanium Hangout. This is Mike. Today I want to talk to you about the X Transbots MX, what, 86, something like that, and B. This is the Le Pulpe, the prosecutor and the researcher Le Pulpus. And these are very high quality feeling figures. The electronics in them, I think, actually function better than Dr. Egg because they're going for something slightly different. In, in a way, it's simplistic. In a way, it's a little complex. But they are massive. They are very impressive on a shelf and on a display. There's a lot of stuff you can sort of do with them. But we're going to get into looking at them. We're going to look at the pluses and the minuses. But I think this is also more reasonably priced than the Dr. Egg. So I think they're going in the right direction with all of these. So I think they're going to be able to sell better as they stay in this price point. Around a 125 price point versus close to 200 for Dr. Egg. And I did get this at Shozy. I got both of these at Shozy. I'm going to have a link down below where you can get yours. But let's take a look at La Pulpa and La Pulpas. Pulpas? Here's the packaging for these guys. And they... Look similar yet different, slightly different effects going on with the pictures. And as you can see, they're both pretty much the same 86, but uh, this one's a B. Uh, that's the difference there. Some writing on the side. Same picture on the back. Bios look about the same. Actually, I recently came across another one of those decoders that you got with the G1. I don't know what I did with it though. I've got a whole bunch of those laying around here. So. There it is, there's the box, the packaging. It just looks like what you'd expect for x All right, so there is some assembly required with this. So first of all, looking at this, there's a side that accepts the tentacles and this side here that we'll just plug in. So you put it in, there's a flat side and a flat side. So you just make sure that matches up and you do that three ways all the way around and they just kind of plug in and then make sure they're plugged in all the way and then you screw them in which it's just kind of simple with the included screwdriver feels like it takes forever it's hard to get it on camera with these tentacles but you're going to put the screw in the hole screw it in all that good stuff i'm going off camera but i'll get back on camera in a second here there we go and you just do that for all the tentacles so if you have two of these you're doing this four times once you have them screwed on, you can plug it in or you can preform it however you want before you plug it in to just kind of give it some life to the tentacle. And I find preforming it right now just kind of gives you an idea of what all you can do with it. And then you can plug it in. So let's bring this guy in to plug it in. And we've got these three little opposite tabs. We have sort of slots with another bit of a tab in there and so you push it on and give it a bit of force and it'll snap into place okay having them put together I gotta say that they are so big that having both of them side by side try to work together is tough in my review station even though I've reviewed combiners and play sets on this it's still a challenge for two of these because they're so big the tentacles move so far to the side but it is really interesting and impressive. So before we get into all the electronics and how it works and all that kind of stuff, let's take a quick look at him. He has a magnificent paint job, just so much paint, so many different paint apps all over this guy. And he does look the part, definitely does fit the bill. And that's a nice looking face. Jaw does move on all that. And it's painted. There's a lot. I wouldn't say the whole thing's painted, but most of it is painted. I think that these pieces here, are not and this waste piece is not but the rest of it has some sort of paint to it uh, of course the clear translucent at the bottom is not painted now going down here when i did pull this out of the box this this is yellow uh kind of a filler tab it fell out it was rattling around in my box i just popped it right back in and it hasn't had any problem so i don't really know if that was just mine or whatever but no big deal there i will show this as we're going down this chest piece which is cool i think it's the exact piece on both of them but this is where you put the batteries so i guess i should show what the batteries look like as we're looking at this guy and of course this is die cast metal painted so a lot of metal and a lot of paint 
This is the battery that you are going to use. It is a 3.7 volts and it's got some sort of number on it too. Uh, but it is a 10440 and 350 milliamp. It's specialty batteries. I really wish they would use something more common that's easier that you don't have to buy special batteries. They were like 10 bucks for four. And oddly enough, they sold it in a four pack. So that was nice. Uh, here we go going down though his waist piece now. He does kind of articulate here So I don't know if that has anything to do with anything at all And then getting down here. You're gonna see this lights up There's some blue and some yellow and some red and stuff like that So pretty cool looking figure overall. Let's look at the back of him real quick and we're gonna get to see a couple of things and so this is the power on button, which will power on in a bit, and then this is the activation button. As you can see, the tentacles are all right here. So, pretty cool looking figure overall. Let's go ahead and turn them on, and then we'll get started on looking at the electronics. All right, so from the side, we're gonna be able to see that we push the button on the back here, and the first one is gonna move the arms, and this is the manual mode. Then you push it again, and then, huh. it, the you get to hear what he says. Guilty. It'll cycle through that. Then it's going to do the lighting. And so the eyes light up, and the lower part lights up. So this is where the remote comes in. So we're, I don't really think it's fun to look at all the stuff twice. So we're going to look at this remote and see what it does. And it is similar to the Dr. Egg remote. Okay, Dr. Egg on the left, and as you see, it says on, off, menu, and auto. And then this one says on, off, tentacles with sound, and sound, light switch, and auto. So, uh, you could, I guess, do everything separately with this if you want. Uh, this is the on and off. So I just push the on and off to get started. I don't know if you have to or not. And then you could do just the lights if you want to, which I don't know why you'd want to do it. Like, well, I guess, I guess really a lot of people would want to display it with just light and not have everything going crazy, especially if you're trying to squeeze this in a detoff. But then you get into the auto button, and I think that's where it's most impressive. It'll just do all of it at the same time. Has the Imperial Magistrate reached a verdict? Guilty or innocent? Feed him. Shark robots. Soon you too shall receive your sentence. Before his Imperial Magistrate delivers a verdict, would you like to beg for your lives? It sometimes helps, but not often. Execute them. So, that's pretty much it, and so we could just kind of hit the off. And, and so one thing is, I with Dr. Egg, I felt like you really had to aim it at the right spot. And this here, you can actually use it pretty much anywhere. You, you don't have to aim it at a spot. And I think that's pretty cool, too. It just picks up. Now, I do want to point out something else, too, about this guy, is that the moving of the tentacles. Now, it's quite obvious you can move the tentacles and you can get any sort of look you want from this at all any any look at all that you want from these tentacles you can pretty much achieve it with the bendiness that's going on inside there's only one thing you really have to be uh conscious of when you're doing this and is will it hit the floor if it's working so you got to be careful with that you got to be careful that it doesn't hit the floor however you set those tentacles up. So that is a big problem with it, but you can mold them to where it looks sort of semi-natural, but won't hit the floor. And so with that, I think that that's a pretty cool idea, a pretty cool way to do it. It's a simplistic sort of mechanism versus Dr. Egg's ultra complex spinning around and talking and hanging up kind of thing. So I think that they've made some improvements on this and it's pretty good. Now getting into the pulpus. Now I got a point that I, I put one box on one side, one box on the other side. I wanted to keep them separate, know which one's which, which, but now I've, to me, now that I've been messing with them, it's very obvious which one's which. This one has a slightly different face. You can still see over here, I have the pulpe 
over here and pulpus right here. So you can see the difference in the face and the facial features and all that kind of stuff. But the front pretty much looks the same. The chest and all that kind of looks the same. Tentacles are exactly the same. And uh, the side of the head and all that kind of stuff is the same. But the back is so much different. So let's real quick just show kind of a back difference. So on this one here, this one has the two different buttons, power, I believe, and then the function. And this is power and function. And then uh, I think underneath this, you flip this piece up to get to the rechargeable. This is the USB-C charging port. I do have rechargeable batteries in there, so it's something I could recharge them down the road if I want to. And I think I probably should have gotten rechargeable batteries for the Dr. Egg. It would have made that whole situation a whole lot better and easier anyway. But yeah, so those are the differences in these guys. So let's go ahead and hit the power on this guy and then we can see it functioning. And then... So it's all the same, so we really don't need to go through it all again. And you can just get the light going on with him and all that kind of stuff. Now I do want to point out something that's kind of frustrating with this guy. And I can't get it to work. I can't get his remote to work. I can't get the light to come on on his remote. And I can't get him to work with the other remote. I thought one remote would work on both. So I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that this remote works fine with that guy. And this remote doesn't work at all and this guy does not respond to any remotes. So it's probably just mine. I probably have some sort of an issue with this guy only, but it is a little frustrating. Even at the $125 price point, the electronics work, but I don't know if it's a receiver issue or if I just have a bum remote and I need a better remote. So I'll figure all that out in the future, but it's still kind of cool to have in the time being. So here he is with Dr. Egg. So that's how he sizes up with the Dr. Egg. And I do want to say a couple things about the Dr. Egg. Uh, first of all, I haven't used the electronics in a long time on it. So my battery was dead. I swapped batteries and now he's hanging up again. So this does have some issues with hanging up and the way to fix it, which I haven't done it yet, and I need to take some time to do it, is to remove this plug on top and un uh, like loosen the screw in there a little bit and then till it works right. And that's what I've been told that that works for the hang up and it just hangs up a little bit and you just gotta help it around, which does kind of suck, but it's still very impressive the way it looks. And so that is how it looks with these guys though. Kind of fun. All right, so here they are with the Hasbro Earthrise Quintesson. This Quintesson is perfectly scaled and perfectly sized for the main line. But Dr. Egg, I think, is too big. I actually think these guys are a little bit too big for a masterpiece, but they're still impressive. And man, they went bigger, went home. But I, I think that this is scaled perfect. Dr. Egg's a bit big. I would like something in the middle for the masterpiece scale, but it works anyway. Here's the Impossible Toys family of products when it comes to Quintessons. They really own the whole Quintesson game back in 2014. So almost a decade ago. I can't believe I'm saying these are almost a decade old, but. Uh, maybe they're older than a decade old. Maybe this was 2012 or something. I, I think I picked mine up in 2015 or 2016 or something. I remember them going on clearance at places for 20 bucks, and I should have picked them picked them up for 20 bucks back then. But uh, these cost significantly more than 20 bucks when I picked them up. So this is what the Impossible Toys one looked like. It looks just the same. Uh, they had basically a the the tentacles molded in a certain way. But it looks the same, like everything looks the same. This actually has the one button on the back instead of the two and all that kind of stuff. Still really cool. Just, it's fun to have these from an age gone by. I really do think that this is what x Transwatch is going to do next in this line. It just makes sense. And I'm, not, I'm surprised they haven't done a Sharticon, Alicon, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, all that greatness. Uh, these actually are supposed to light up. I think I had a little trouble with the lighting features on one of them, but... 
Uh, and then, of course, we have good old the good old Quintesson from Impossible Toys. So these always felt like they were Chug, but Hasbro said, no, nope, you're, you're, you're smaller than Chug. You're more like Legends. Right, Hasbro? Hot Rod, you smell something funny in here. Well, this is how they look next to Hot Rod and Cup. This is X-Transbots, this is fans' toys, mingling together, hanging out on a shelf, like they always do. But, yeah, that is... These things are huge. These are just huge. And here they are next to uh, MP44, MP36. I think it would be more appropriate with MP09. And uh, what's Takara's Galvatron? Oh, they didn't make one. Anyway, there they are side by side. And what they look like scale-wise are till still... Still taller than MP10 and MP36. And a nice group shot for, well, just for fun. Just for stuff and giggles and fun. And, and because why not? Let's see if we can get more of it in frame here. So it's starting to shape up. There's a nice little Quintesson ensemble going on right here. A whole lot of stuff that you can do. A lot of variation, a lot of variety. Kind of makes me wonder, though, is the Impossible Toy stuff going to go on fire sale on eBay? Now that these... Big, massive, true masterpiece ones are out on the market. Okay, so this is my look at the X Transbots, the Le Pulpe and Pulpus. And I gotta say that they did a pretty good job with these, aside from my one of my remotes not working, so not getting the remote use out of one of them. I'm still pretty happy with them overall. And so with that, very nice addition to the collection. Uh, as for displaying these, these are barely going to fit in a DTOF 1 by itself. Fitting two in a DTOF will be a challenge. I don't have a DTOF, so I won't have that problem. But I will have my own storage issues and display issues trying to fit all this in a display and look uncluttered. <laughs> but uh, these are huge. They're massive. They're very high quality. Lots of die cast. Lots of weight behind them. Lots of features and functions and so I, I I think they're priced right also I mean the price is good at 125 for these versus almost 200 for Dr. Egg and I'm curious what they're going to come out with next I really hope they continue these and make all of them and of course put impossible toys to shame but I did get this at shows you know, I'll have a link down below where you can get yours like and subscribe and you hang around I wish for that.